How to create a rainbow warp tunnel effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. Inside your project edit window, go to effects, underneath toolbox, select effects, and go to drag a fusion composition clip to your edits timeline. Select this clip, holding control or command if you're a Mac user, and press D to alter the five second default duration of this clip if you wish. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Fusion Notes panel, go to Select an Ellipse tool from underneath the Fusion timeline. Select either the left or right view options underneath this new node to see a preview of your ellipse shape above the Fusion timeline. We will use this node to create the multicolored oval shapes that will make up our warp tunnel effect. With this new node selected, go to Inspector and underneath controls to add a gentle feather effect to the edge of your ellipse, increase soft edge slightly to 0.005, change width to 0.35 and change height to 0.04. Deselect your ellipse node by clicking anywhere on the empty nodes grid and go to select a second ellipse node. We will use the second ellipse tool to create the ring where the multicolored oval particles will emit from. With the second ellipse tool selected and in left or right view preview, return to inspector and underneath controls, increase border width slightly to 0.05 and ensure that invert and solid are deselected. To reduce the size of the ring so that we can see particles floating across the entire canvas, including the top and bottom sections, Reduce width and height to 0.3. Deselect your second ellipse tool, hold in shift and press space, and use the search box at the bottom to find the P emitter tool. Select this and go to click on add. With this new tool selected, under inspector and controls, to increase the number of particles that will appear in your warp tunnel effect, increment the value for number. Here in this example, I will increase this to 50 and to vary the number of particles emitting from the central ring slightly, I will increment number variance to 1. To ensure that the oval shaped particles point outwards and away from the central ring, go to rotation and change rotation mode from absolute rotation to rotation relative to motion so that the particles point in the direction that they are floating in. In order to set our ellipse shapes to the particles, we now need to go to style Change style from point to bitmap. You should now see a yellow arrow appearing alongside your P emitter node under your fusion timeline. Click on the grey box next to ellipse 1, which represents the oval shape that you created for your rainbow tunnel effect. Hold your mouse button down and drag your cursor to the yellow arrow alongside P emitter 1 to make a connection. With P emitter 1 still selected, return to inspector. To add some vibrancy to the particles, we can increase gain slightly to 1.2. To add colour variation, open up the colour controls options, double click on colour variance, and increase each of the red, green, blue and alpha variances to minus 1 for low and to 1 for high. Then go to untick lock colour variance. Double click on size controls, to avoid having the particles appear too abruptly in the animation effect and to help them blend into the starting point of the tunnel represented by the ring, click and drag the left node inside the size over life grid to the bottom left corner so that the particles will appear at a minimum size at the start of the animation. Drag the second node which appears to the right of this first one and drag this upwards until the curvature of the yellow line is on top of the halfway horizontal grid line. If this second node doesn't appear at all, simply click on the yellow line and drag manually. Then go to drag the node at the end of the yellow line on the right to the top right corner so that the particles increase in size throughout their lifespan, creating the illusion that they are also moving closer to the viewer, thus enhancing the three-dimensional tunnel effect. Double click on fade controls to have the particles fade in at the ring starting point also. Increase fade in to 0.4 so that each particle spends the first 40% of its lifespan fading in. Scroll back up and select region. 
in order to set this particular ring shape that we created with the second ellipse tool as the source of the particles, we need to change region from sphere to bitmap. You should now see a green region bitmap arrow appearing above your P-emitter 1 tool. Click and drag from the grey box of ellipse 2 to this green arrow. In order to have the particles float towards the viewer in a tunnel form, with P-emitter 1 selected, hold in shift and press space again, and go to add a P-tangent force tool. With this new tool selected, go to inspector and underneath controls, Increase edge strength to 0.5, which will result in the particles floating anti-clockwise. If you wish for the particles to float around in clockwise form, invert the value for z strength. Here in this example, you would change this to minus 0.5. For now, I will keep this at 0.5. With P tangent 4 still selected, hold in shift and press space, and go to add a P render tool so that your particle effect can be processed by DaVinci Resolve and to add some final glow and blur touches to the particles with P render 1 still selected, hold in shift and press space and go to add a glow tool. With glow 1 selected, go to inspector and underneath controls to increase the spread of the glow, increase glow size slightly to 11 and to enhance the vibrancy, increase glow to 0.87. With glow 1 still selected, hold in shift and press space and go to add a Gaussian Blur tool. With this new tool selected, under Inspector and Controls, decrease Strength to 0.25. Finally, connect Gaussian Blur to Media Out 1. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.